Even though we have found out how to have a very peaceful school, sometimes conflict happens. When it does happen, we need to know how to regain trust and regain peace. Navajo peacemaking, um, first of all, we recognize that peace and harmony is being in a state of hojo. When that state of hojo is interrupted or um, fragmented, then there's conflict. You don't want to mess with Trisha, you cow! I wasn't messing with Trisha, what are you talking about? Don't you lie to me, I know what you did, cow! I didn't do anything, pig. Look at that I know, you cow, move! What did you just call her? Oh. You want to fight? You can't talk to Mariah like that. I'm very disappointed in both of you. What happened here today? We need to go talk to Mr. Sorensen. Let's go. Peacemaking is when you resolve a conflict. Make peace with the other person. Um, to make peace between two friends that were fighting. We are referring to peacemaking in Navajo as Kebe Yenanajo. That term has four parts to it, four steps or four aspects. Ke is relations, Be is using, so it would be Kebe using the relations. Yenna the mind or the emotions of a person. Naljot is the restoration or the um, correcting what the problem was. Therefore, resolution or restoration of peace and harmony. Peacemaking is an ancient Navajo cultural practice. We follow the steps as they have been handed down by many, many generations. The first step is a petition for spiritual assistance. We start with um, spiritual assistance. And you can do this in your own way, in your own time. And we'll just pause for a moment, okay? I'm going to ask for help. You guys ask for help too. The next step is to figure out how we're all related by introducing ourselves. Relations established in step two because um, after relationships are established and uh, relationships are used. All right, so tell me how you guys are connected, how you're related to one another. Um, my first clan is Clan. planet. I'm one who walks around clan. Now that we know that we all are related, 
and you know I'm related to you guys because I'm the principal here I see you grow I see you develop every day I care about you I care about you every day so that's how I know I'm connected to you guys step three is the outline of what the peacemaking process is going to be one person talks at a time and everyone else listens. Everyone has an opportunity to speak without using blame or discredit or punishment. And so far, everybody tells their side of the story and everybody else listens. Okay, so now let's talk about what happened. Um, I was talking with my friends and they started calling me cow and... I called Maria, Mariah and her friends. Um, bad comments. Well, she started calling me and my friends pig, so we started calling her cow back and started mooing at her. Step five, the peacemaker guides everybody to an agreement. You guys are all related. You're all friends, you're cousins, you're related by clan, and yet you get in this big fuss, huh, over something somebody else said about something somebody else said. F6 is where you clarify the settlement. The peacemaker restates the settlement proposed to make sure that everyone knows what they are agreeing to. Okay, so now that you've apologized to one another, you've made peace with one another, I gotta remind you about your other responsibility now. So you have to do it like you mean it. You have to do it from your heart, okay? Step seven is where you shake each other's hands and you apologize and you give thanks. And the final, the seventh step, is ending with thanks. This is so important because as a peacemaker, um, when you see the moment of transformation happen and you see peace beginning to settle again among all the people, it is a moment of gratitude. The ultimate goal of a peacemaker would be to restore peace and harmony after a conflict or dispute has been resolved. So your own peacemaking is like having a small peacemaking session like outside on a playground or where like children play. I tell the girls want to play basketball too. I got first, go get your own. There's no more we want to play basketball too. So, I don't care. Stop, what are you guys doing? Jim won't give us the ball. She could have got her own ball, we got it first. Okay, everybody just take a second to calm down and breathe. Okay, aren't you guys cousins? So you're related, right? Why are you fighting like that? He won't share. I got the ball first. We want to play too. He's not being fair. Okay, so the problem is that there's only one ball and both of you guys want to play? So what's the solution here? I don't know, we could all play together, boys versus girls. That's not fair. What if you pick teams that had both boys and girls? Okay, then we can all play. All right. <laughs> Peacemaking is just a lot of perspective taking and thinking about how the other person feels about the way they've been treated or how the bully or someone who's hurting the other person, how they feel. While peacemaking has its roots in Navajo culture, we believe it has universal applications for making the world a safer and more peaceful place. Be the cans, I'm so sick of it. These days I
According to our elders, peacemaking has always been with the people. Peacemaking has always been an approach or a method used to create or recreate peace and harmony in the lives of our people. Um, all ages can do it, whether it's preschoolers or high schoolers or elders. Like preschoolers can learn at a young age from their teachers, and they can see older kids doing it. And of course, they'll think it's cool or something, and they'd want to do it. And they can make peace within their classrooms and teach other students in their class to do it too. Mirrors with no face in it. These days are so crazy. All of our world politicians should learn peacemaking. Blue skies, I'm so used to it. Blue skies, I'm so sick of it. Days are so crazy in my life. Pictures with no frame on it, mirrors with no face in it. These days are so crazy in my life. Why you? Better way. 